Now, as we talk about travel, a massive blow to the airline industry after the company behind Pearson Airport announcing it's eliminating 500 jobs, a quarter of its workforce. So what does this say about the future of air travel? For more, I'm joined by McGill, a global aviation professor, John Gradick. For more, good morning to you, John. Good morning, Mel. Uh, I think maybe not surprising news when we saw the layoffs, um, but as we just saw in that feature just 10 minutes ago, all of the different safety protocol that's put in place, we've got the robots, the sprays, the touchless things, you would think that maybe they needed those human bodies uh, to be able to be there for the upkeep. So how does this all work hand in hand, the, the healthy airports program versus the layoffs? Well, let's just talk about the layoffs just for a couple of minutes. I think that the layoffs were not surprising. I think that uh, we've seen airports across Canada, Montreal, Vancouver, Calgary, um, take layoffs in the range of about 25 to 35 percent. So uh, GTAA was uh, a little slow behind the, the rest of the Canadian airports. Uh, so it is trying times. The traffic that would normally be there in the summertime is nowhere near those levels that normally we would be expecting, somewhere around 25 percent of those levels so we don't need as many people in those airports to basically handle that level of traffic. So the question then becomes one of technology that's being put in place, uh, plus there's also you know, the, the question of the number of people deploying that technology. So the airports basically are looking at trying to put together a, a, a more sanitary approach to, to uh, going through that airport. It is a very different experience as you saw uh, and uh, there's a lot of technology being deployed into the airports these days that really try to make sure that that uh, people are uh, you know for following the rules uh, you cannot go into the terminal unless you're flying right. and the, meet, the meters and greeters just are not allowed into that building so it's it's a much more sterile environment uh, and there's a lot more equipment that's put in place to make sure that uh, everybody that comes through that airport environment uh, is safe and they're managing the virus I want to talk about uh, safety and future of airports in just a second, but I want to uh, mention the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy. So we did reach out to the GTAA who said, um, you know, they, they were using it, they did apply for it, and then they stopped because it just wasn't sustainable really because of what they need to, need to look at when it comes to bigger picture for some of their personnel. So I just wanted to mention that, that we did reach out to the GTAA. But I, I think the big question for a lot of people is, how long is it going to be like this? Well, that's the big question. I think, and it's a question of the Canadian traveling public feeling comfortable in flying again. Uh, I think that's where people are still uh, concerned about what it, you know, what the environment looks like on board an airplane. Uh, you're looking at, you know, airplanes that are going to get uh, more and more crowded. Uh, two or three months ago, you know, sometimes you'd be the only person on the plane. Today. Uh, the airplanes are getting uh, more and more crowded. They're back to what they normally be, close to 100% load factor. Uh, so you'll be sitting next to somebody that you may not know or that you will not know, uh, and whether you, you won't know their medical condition. And if you're sitting beside that person and that person is feeling somewhat ill and starts to cough or starts to sneeze, uh, I think that would get some people pretty nervous. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, what are the long-term effects here? So eventually, we will get to some sense of normalcy when it comes to air travel or comfort level. Again, it could take some time. Who knows what that uh, magic answer is on, on the timeline. But is there anything that you see that's being put into place now that is going to stick around for a while? Well, I think that you've, there, there's some fundamental changes that will be in place. I think that you know the, the, the sterility of the airport and the hygiene in the airport will stick. Uh, the hygiene, uh, when you get on board an airplane and you see the work that's been done by the airlines to clean that airplane up before you get on the airplane, is going to stick. I think people are going to be very, very conscious about hygiene and safety on board the airplane. Um, the, the service levels that you have on airplanes, which today are very low, they probably will come back. So you get meals served, you'll get drinks served, you know, slowly but surely. Um, but, you know, the, the, you know, will flight attendants keep wearing masks? Will flight attendants... You know, look at hazmat suits. Some airlines around the world have basically got, you know, uniforms for flight attendants that are hazmats. And so, you know, that will probably go 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 by the boards uh, once we get a vaccine. Um, but I think, you know, the, the, the introduction of the vaccine and a successful deployment of the vaccine is a, probably the one thing that will drive people's uh, need and desire to fly once again. Indeed, and, and some of these vaccine companies have already said, don't, don't put all your money on us just yet, right? Because there's still a lot of work to be done. Nothing's 100%. Uh, John, yeah. some great insight here. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, but we thank you so much uh, this morning, and I'm sure we'll be talking again. Oh, I'm sure, Mel. Have a great day. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. You too.